This is quite interesting. Today, we're talking about the SEC and Ripple lawsuit and why we believe they're settling, as well as some tweets that were posted and then immediately deleted by Ripple and the SEC on different dates. We were lucky to be able to obtain some of those tweets by somebody screenshotting them to us and sending it. So, we're going to go ahead and show you guys all this breaking news. And in addition to all of this, make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe for daily content, especially with crypto news pumping out every single day for Ripple XRP. Keep up to date by subscribing. And quick disclaimer, not financial or legal advice, and let's get right into it. A crazy tweet by the Ripple team on January 20th. This was also around the same time that the joint letter between Ripple and the SEC was actually sent out to the Judge Napburn for the SEC lawsuit. And this is what it says. Thanks for that, at SEC government, I think we're finally getting somewhere. And once again, this tweet was instantly deleted that day. The only way we were even able to obtain this is because the viewer actually sent it in and said that he was able to screenshot it before he got deleted. And this to me connects with what Jeremy Hogan's actually said in the past. And uh, this was actually on June 20th. 2021, which he said the attorney Jeremy Hogan says that a settlement on the XRP lawsuit between Ripple and the ICC is likely to occur after the discovery phase. And if we dig a little deeper, the end of expert discovery is February 28th. So we are guessing that there is going to be a settlement around that time frame, probably maybe uh, February. End of February to probably mid-March, somewhere around there, there will be a settlement. Of course, this is if things don't really change. Another tweet that came out and was deleted that once again is going to be crazy is this one. Gary Gensler tweeting at Brad Garlinghouse, still on schedule to be wrapped up by next Friday. And this was, of course, January 7th. So if we look at the time frame, January 7th, uh, right here, he says next Friday. And then we look at this Ripple uh, tweet right here on January 20th. Basically, they did this tweet. He deleted it. And then on the 20th, Ripple posted this tweet. And then it got deleted as well. Doesn't that seem suspicious? To me, both sides are trying to discuss a settlement. And none of them can actually disclose any information. And they're just posting it out, giving little hints here and there without really saying anything and hoping that somebody's able to screenshot it so that at least some people really understand what's going on. Now, I wasn't able to confirm whether these tweets are legit or not, but what I do have to say is that they look quite decent, but there is some flaws that make me believe that it's not that legit. But let's forget about that because the reality is that I believe a settlement's gonna happen anyways for a different reason. One of the main ones being something that was hinted which is actually on January 18th at 8 a.m. posted by Joel Kazel playing the Wordle game. And in this case, he says, oh yes, I'm getting the hang of this, Wordle 213-4-6. And then if we jump onto the SEC, they tweeted the same thing, except they, took, they tweeted love of Wordle is universal. Wordle 213-4-6, so the same one. And then it links to this, we just issued rules, SEC government, that gives shareholders more say in who directs the companies they own. So I really just feel that there's a lot of code going together. In addition to this, on JK Fillon, the SEC and Ripple both agreed to extend expert discoveries deadline. Now, normally this wouldn't happen if they're not negotiating a settlement of some sort, but the fact that it has happened once again adds to that additional list of why we believe there's a settlement. The idea is that if Ripple did not want to, to extend the lawsuit or did not want to settle, they wouldn't want to extend the time longer because the longer it takes, the more money Ripple has to lose. Now, this, of course, changes if there's a settlement or some type of settlement negotiations taking place between Ripple and the SEC because then the whole directive changes. If the Ripple team and the SEC need time to negotiate without letting it impact the actual result of the lawsuit, then they're going to ask for an extension. That way, if settlement negotiations work well and both sides agree, then they easily can just settle and the lawsuit will be over. But if they end up breaking up the settlements and one person dislikes a side, they still have enough time to file more documentation and continue the lawsuit going in the most fair way. Now, of course, this is why I believe this whole expert discovery extension took place 
but it is quite annoying because you never know what could happen if settlements break apart and you know it goes ahead we just wasted another few weeks to uh the loss which would have been completed if we didn't have this extension. It's funny because the recent document where the SEC is trying to file a motion to strike Ripple's fair notice is inevitably a clear failure. Jeremy Hogan's an attorney, or a public attorney that we like to call him, for the XRP community says this. The SEC is not winning these cases at the motion to strike stage, where the Ripple case is at, but later in the litigation at motions for summary judgment. The FND depends on the specific facts of each case and will be decided at summary judgment and not at an MST.IMO. And of course, he links a gift which says, yeah, I see you got some apples and some oranges. Guys, Q4 markets are now released for Ripple. Now it says, we dive into the latest on XRP Ledger and info updates. Global regulations, Ripple Nets momentum, interoperability, and more rate for the latest on the crypto market. Q4 2021 XRP market report. So I have done my fair bit of share of accounting, and uh, we're going to do a quick read of their charts, their, their sheets, and it's the sales summary. Let's have a look at that. So their old DL released the sales in uh, Q3 for their sales summary, and uh, not bad actually. So it's, it's went up. A decent chunk so that shows that they're quite profitable they do have a few purchases but even in relation to that their sales net of purchases are double a little less than double of uh, the q3 so they are quite profitable more than they were in quarter three quarter four they're quite high in this case and uh, it shows that they are making some profitabilities for the global xrp volume q3 they're actually down for uh, xrp in dollars but this is impacted because of xrp's price value which is currently at a slows of 60 cents, I think. Once again, same idea, back in correlation for total XRP volume, which is now at 168 from its previous quarter of 189, and the net sales of as percentage of total volume, they did do some sales of XRP, and that's 0.43, so less than a percentage, less than half a percent, um, which kind of proves that they really are not trying to sell their XRP. They're holding as much as they can here. And if we look, this is the global XRP sales here, so not really much people sold, and that's the thingy that's going to shock people. Not much people sold 0.43% so of the total volume, which really shows that people are really holding. And uh, that's pretty much it for, the, I think, their sales summary in the global XRP volume sheets. And just another quick thing within regards to settlement. Now, Ripple did announce this was a few days ago that they're buying back shares 200 million and expressing optimism for 2022. And they've currently valued their company at 15 billion. Don't tell me there is any way that they are buying back Series C funding shares when they believe Ripple's going to lose loads of money because XRP is going to go to zero dollars if the SEC sues them and they lose. Clearly, they have two things in mind: either they know they're going to win, or they know there's a settlement. And uh, currently, they have like there's like seventy to thirty percent chance that it's going to be a settlement versus win they're gonna win that's a guarantee there's no settlement they're gonna automatically win but i definitely believe they're gonna get a settlement probably for then for the advantage of the sec because the sec wants to be able to sue other cryptocurrencies and if the sec loses this case then they're not gonna be able to touch any crypto in the uh asset commodity uh field so any cryptocurrency out there will not be able to get sued by the sec anymore because they'll use the ripple case so i believe that they're gonna settle just so that the SEC doesn't go ahead and, uh, you know, because they want to sue. The SEC wants to sue. And if they don't settle, then the SEC won't be able to sue. So the SEC is going to settle so that they can sue other cryptocurrencies. And that's going to make XRP the only cryptocurrency in the United States of America that is a, a digital asset, commodity, and uh, everything else will have a question mark. And with that, Brad Carling House announces on Twitter, excited attendance, Ripple bought back our Series C December 2019 shares at $15 billion valuation. 2021 slowed down. It's not our vocabulary. Even with 2021's uh, headwinds, it was our best year on record. And Ripple's financial position, one bill in the bank, is the strongest we've ever been. I wonder if I can check their financial position uh, so this is actually their equity. If you guys don't know, uh, don't know what a financial position is. Expenses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, also known as the balance sheet. For anybody that's in accounting, this would be the balance sheet. One billion dollars in the bank, and it's the strongest they've ever been. Okay, so they continues on by saying the Ripple Net is much more than cross-border payments. It's bringing crypto-native services such as liquidity to enterprises 
Today, the network has a volume run rate of greater than 10 billion. Huge props to the team for continuously upping their game and leaning into new capabilities every year. Ripple X, full speed ahead of establishing a multitude of capabilities to the XRP ledger, NFTs, CBDCs, interpretable bridges, sidechains, and so much more, working hands in hand with devs and partners around the world. It's a multi-chain world after all. And it's quite crazy how they're willing to spend $200 million to buy back shares when they're in the biggest battle of the company's lifetime, the SC vs. Ripple case. And this kind of once again reaffirms what I've been talking about and what I mentioned only a few minutes ago, where they can almost guarantee a win or a settlement. So that's good to know and it's good for us investors to know as well. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be the end of today's video. Make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. By the way, guys, get ready for a crazy live stream and video that is going to be released later today. So get prepared for that. Just a little hint, hint. Make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button. Get ready for an epic live stream coming. We're going to be interviewing somebody, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.